we'll, I'll provide the recording to Roxy to share it to you all in case you may want to watch it again or if you um, know someone who wasn't able to make it at this time. Um, but my name is Allison Keir. I am Assistant Director of Indiana InternNet. Um, just a couple housekeeping rules. Um, you all are muted um, and your video is turned off. Please feel free to keep it that way. Actually, please do keep it that way. Um, I'll pause throughout the presentation um, to ask if there are any questions and things. So then you can unmute yourself, ask the questions or type things into the chat. I'm also joined here today by Emily Combs. She is our uh, summer outreach intern. This is actually her last day with us. So, um, you know, I'm super sad about it, but I'm glad that she's here. She also was our first ever fully virtual intern. Um, we're gonna spend some time talking about uh, hosting virtual interns. And um, you can also ask her some questions as well at the end of the presentation. But Emily's a Fort Wayne native and she is a rising senior at IUPUI. So I'm really excited and happy that she's here on this, uh, on this uh, presentation today. And also, um, just so that everyone can get to know one another, if you would like to please type um, who you are, what company you're with, what your role is at that company, and any contact information you want to share into the chat. Um, I'm also going to be sending the chat to Roxy after this so that that way if you want to network and connect with any other uh, chamber members feel free to do so as well so the chat option is available to you put your contact information into that all right so let's uh, get this presentation started again my name is Allison here I'm assistant director of Indiana InternNet so just a little bit of um, information about Indiana Internet so you can know who we are and what we do. So our official mission statement is that we are the catalyst for expanding the creation and use of experiential learning opportunities as a key strategy in retaining Indiana's top talent. Basically what our goal is is to connect um, students with Hoosier employers who are offering internship, internships and work-based learning opportunities. Um, we were actually created way back in 2001 um, as a response to highlighting Indiana's issue with the brain drain. So students were receiving their degrees here, their education here, and then moving to other states to work and live. So with the hopes of you know, exposing students to internships and work-based learning opportunities early in their college and even in their high school years, um, they'll find opportunities within Indiana and stay here after graduation. So when we were created, we were initially hosted um, by the Greater Indianapolis Chamber of Commerce in partnership with the University of Indianapolis. So at the time, it was very much an indie focus. Um, however, in 2004, we were granted 501c3 status and um, became a, an organization that's managed by the state chamber, the Indiana State Chamber of Commerce. So we do serve the entire state, um, providing and connecting students with employers for internship opportunities. So just to make sure um, that we all are on the same page, everybody kind of has their own definition about what internships are, but our official definition is that internships are a form of structured and supervised experiential learning that provides students practical experience in their chosen field. So when I'm looking at internships, the two things I'm looking for is that, yes, it's structured and that it's supervised. Um, so it differs from externships and job shadows. Those are typically, um, you know, those are shorter, very, very short experiences. They're often unpaid. Internships, they're not volunteering or service learning. Um, volunteering and service learning are typically surrounded around like one specific goal or one specific project. And again, those are typically unpaid. Internships are not co-ops, which are longer, more structured, and internships are not apprenticeships which we're actually seeing um, a really big growth around apprenticeships lately, but apprenticeships are longer. They're you know, multi-year commitments with students for them to explore a certain field. 
And when you think about internships, a lot of you are probably going to think about, you know, the traditional internship. So what the traditional internship is, is that it's typically, you know, 12 to 16 weeks in length, 15 to 30 hours per week, you know, students working a little less during the school year, more during um, summer and breaks. It's in line with academic semesters, so spring, summer, fall, winter. Primarily a talent pool of college students. However, you know, we're seeing that change. A lot more high school students are getting involved and it's typically paid. So actually 80% um, of the internships that are posted to our website, indianaintern.net, they are paid opportunities. And we see the average at about $13 per hour. So we'll, a little bit later in the presentation, we'll talk about um, a way to kind of offset those costs, but um, that's you know, typically what we see. So now let's talk about virtual internships. With the COVID uh, pandemic going on, virtual internships have you know, become almost kind of a necessity for some employers to keep their internships going. Um, for us, that was how we were able to keep hosting interns um, just because of our company's policy. So virtual internships now, we're seeing that, that surge of them because there's so much uncertainty right now. We're not really sure you know, how long this type of quarantine social distancing is going to happen. Students are unsure you know, what school is going to look like for them. But what's good about virtual internships, you know, especially now, is that you're not able to lose your talent pipeline. If you can't host interns on your company's site, you can still have internships by hosting them virtually and you'll keep that talent pipeline going. You're also going to have access to greater pool of candidates. When you have on-site interns, they typically, you know, they're from your local community, they're from you know, schools that are nearby. So you do have a, a limited talent pool, but with virtual internships, you can have stu students interning for your company you know, anywhere in the state. As long as they have a computer, some Wi-Fi access, they're good to go. You have more flexible scheduling opportunities. Interns don't necessarily have to work the nine to five if your company allows that. And you know, I always like to tell employers, it's a lot easier than you can think. Um, for our company at the Chamber, when we had our spring interns, they were in person and we actually were given a 24 hour warning before our company completely shut down. Um, and so we had to quickly change those in person internships to virtual opportunities. Um, it was a little bit scrambling, but it, we were able to make it work and it was easier than you think. So when you're thinking about having a virtual internship, it does heavily rely on making sure that you have the right tools and the right technology. So you wanna have a way to communicate with your interns. So you need to have a way to chat with them. Here are some of the popular chat tools. We use Microsoft Teams all the time. I'm always you know, messaging Emily over Teams just to check in with her. Video, you know, right now we're using Zoom. Zoom's been great. Project management, um, so a way for interns to track the projects that they're working on. We use Basecamp. And then also document management, so a way for interns to easily access your company's files and for them to also save. So we use Dropbox as well, but there are all different types of, of options for you to use. And just so you know, I will also be sharing the PowerPoint as well with Roxy, so you'll have that at your fingertips too. So when it comes to a virtual internship, there's some, a little bit of some prep work and things that you need to do before an internship starts. So you can do the onboarding process virtually. That means if there's any you know, HR paperwork that they need to fill out, a meeting with HR, things like that, you can schedule that, send them the paperwork and everything and have them send it back to you virtually. You need to make sure that they have access to the things that they need to do to be successful in their internship. They, you got to make sure that they have access to internet, that they can access your emails, files, all of that, you know, that they're going to be ready to go on day one. And you really need to make sure that they have an ability to contact you or if you're not their supervisor, their supervisor. So, you know, we share our phone numbers with our interns, um, our personal numbers in case you know, hey, their internet's not working or something and they need to get a hold of us, they can just shoot us a text real easily. Um, you also wanna make sure to set up some regular check-in meetings. 
having a schedule with a virtual intern is one of the most important things um, because you're not seeing them face to face. So to have kind of a structured, rigid schedule is great. We meet twice a week as a team and we kind of scheduled these in advance um, and got those on Emily's ca uh, calendar. You also wanna set up a schedule and stick to it. So um, for Emily, she works Monday through Thursday from nine to five and she sticks to that. So we know exactly when she's working and when she's not. And you wanna discuss their, their goals and determine large projects. So you wanna make sure that they're doing something that they want to do and that they want to see on their resume. And you do wanna be thinking about projects that they can do virtually. So, you know, sometimes they, for example, we usually host, uh, before COVID, we would host in-person um, engagement events for interns. And when COVID happened, you know, obviously those things weren't happening. And that was a huge project that our summer interns could contribute to. So we kind of had to be a little creative on things that, you know, Emily can do virtually um, when she can't necessarily be hands-on here. And finally, with a virtual internship, you know, when those are happening, there's things that you need to make sure that you're doing um, during the internship. So communication is key. It, you, we almost over communicate with the team, always checking in and such. And you really want to make sure to give your interns clear deadlines. Um, if you're expecting to have it done by 5 p.m. on Tuesday, let them know so that they know when to get that work done. As I mentioned, have those regular check-ins. And you also want to include your interns in virtual meetings and conference calls. Like, you know, Emily tagged along here. Um, we would probably be having this presentation in person if uh, COVID wasn't going on and she would actually be able to tag along to that meeting. But, but still including her virtually is, is equally as important. And then you do want to make sure that you're having that evaluation and feedback constantly. Um, it's so important in internships because this, for a lot of them, is their first experience in the professional world. So connect with them, evaluate the work that they're doing, and provide as much feedback as necessary. So before I move on to, let me just make sure that that was it. Yes, before I move on to other components of internships in general, does anyone have any questions about virtual internships? Feel free to unmute yourself, type it into the chat, whatever you're comfortable with. All right, well, I'm gonna keep going and we'll have a time for questions at the end. So regardless of what your internship is, whether it's virtual or, you know, it could even be a hybrid, which we're seeing a lot and actually the Chamber's policy um, for employees, if they would like, is kind of a hybrid model of working virtually three days a week and then um, going in person uh, two days a week. So some companies are doing that as well. Um, Roxy asked, how do you recommend eval evaluating soft skills during a virtual internship? Yeah, that's really great. And I think, you know, a lot of um, soft skills that you typically can work on in person, you know, whether it's teamwork or collaboration, you can still kind of do that in a virtual manner. So. Um, we do a lot of uh, Zoom calls and Zoom things, um, so that kind of helps with Emily to collaborate with um, our other team members on Indiana Internet, um, as well as chatting um, through Microsoft Teams. So communication, um, leadership skills, it's really looking at, you know, how responsive are they in you know, chats or Zoom, are they contributing? Are they reaching out or are they just kind of, you know, logging into the computer and you don't really hear from them at all? I think that that's kind of how you can look and, and nurture those soft skills. It is hard to, to get that collaboration going, but, you know, I know some companies with large intern cohorts, they work on doing projects with their interns. So they could combine different interns from different departments and have them work on a project together. So that's kind of fostering that teamwork and collaboration soft skills 
and they still do it virtually. You know, they're meeting through Zoom, they're working um, through email, through chat, through Slack, through whatever. So, you know, you can still do that in a virtual environment. But, you know, regardless of what type of internship that you're doing, it's important that they have these, you know, three structures. So the first structure that you really think of when you're building an internship program is providing additional capacity for mission critical projects. So these are the things that your company does every single day that your intern can just kind of add an extra set of hands to. For example, Emily, she helps a lot with our outreach to employers to see if they filled their internships. That's something that we do every single month, regardless of if we have an intern or not, by, but by having her there helping, it kind of helps to remove things from you know, my plate and free me up to do some more things. Um, the second thing is leadership opportunities for secondary projects. So this is something that within the first week of an intern starting, we meet with them and we say, you know, what do you want a bullet point to look like on your resume from your time here at the intern, at, you know, this internship? And they really kind of build that project on their own. Um, for Emily, for example, she was really passionate about high school internships. And this is something that, you know, we've all, our website has always been here to support high school interns, but they still are not, you know, the largest audience that we have. So she created a ton of communication materials, emails, you know, posters, flyers, things like that um, to reach out to the high school community and not only students, but, you know, counselors and parents as well. And that's something that she really owned from start to finish. And then lastly, they need to have kind of solo work on back burner projects. And I like to call this, you know, the 25th hour in a day project. So if your company had you know, 25 hours in a day, what would you do with that one extra hour? What's something that you just can't get to that you've been pushing off and how can they help? And that's, um, you know, a really good way for interns to contribute and, you know, help your company along the way while building their skills. So this timeline is totally not what we're seeing this year. But this is kind of the typical timeline of when to post. So you have your internship description ready. When do you post? So, you know, if you're looking for a fall intern, I would have said it's too late. You, you've got it. You should have gotten that posted a long time ago. However, we're seeing because of so much uncertainty, we're seeing students kind of waiting a little bit to start searching and we're seeing employers waiting a little bit to start posting. So for example, we typically see summer internships start in May, but we saw so many summer internships start in, you know, June, a couple, you know, late July, just because they were so uncertain as to what the work environment is going to look like. Um, I'm still seeing fall internships get posted. We still have a lot of active student searching. I'm seeing a lot of fall internships starting in September this year as opposed to August. So, you know, it, it's a weird year. It's, it's a really weird year, but, um, you know, you just gotta, gotta kind of feel it out and, and see. But, you know, typically, Fall, we, we see people, employers start posting April to early June, spring, September to early November, and summer, December to early March. But I think the biggest thing to keep in mind about internships is that it does take a little bit more time to find the right match than it would be if you're recruiting, you know, full-time or part-time employee, because you're working with a lot of students. And these students have class schedules, they have extracurricular activities, so they just can't, you know, put in a two week notice and go intern with you. They need time to kind of, you know, build their experience, um, build their schedule around your internship. So give yourself time to recruit. Don't expect, you know, to have someone ready to go um, right off the bat. So you've got your internship posting made, you know when you're ready to post. So how exactly should you market it? Um, what I always tell employers is to take advantage of so many resources that are available to you. If your company has a careers page, you need to get that internship up there along with your full-time and part-time jobs. College and university job boards post with them. Um, attend career and internship fairs. 
Um, pretty much every single school that I've received invites to are doing virtual fairs this semester. And they're a really awesome opportunity. Many of them are going to be through Zoom or through Handshake. Um, and so it's a good way to connect with students face to face. Some schools have individual on campus recruitment times. I do know a lot of schools are moving those virtual as well. So it's an extra opportunity to connect face to face with students, um, not necessarily at like a career or internship fair experience. Market your internship on social media, post it on LinkedIn, post it on Twitter, all of that. And then finally, um, post it on indianaintern.net. Uh, one of the good things about us is that we actually share internships with colleges and universities around the state. So you post with us, um, we send them to you know, so many schools. I think today it's, it's up to 25 schools because we have a partnership with Handshake. Um, so you'll post with us and we send it out to um, Ball State, Purdue, all Ivy Tech campuses, multiple IU campuses, not just IU Bloomington, um, Purdue Northwest, Purdue Fort Wayne, ISU. Um, and so it gets uploaded to their job board, students see it, and then it redirects them back to Indiana Internet to apply. So we're super excited um, if you have been posting on Handshake and things, which is kind of the major um, college university job board. It's great that we have that partnership with them. And so this is just a little bit about the work that we do to make these connections happen. So our website is a completely free, it's free for employers, free for students, internship matching program, linking individual seeking internships, Indiana employers, Indiana high schools, colleges, and universities. We provide high touch, which is you know, really great customer service and high tech, which is the website, um, services to anyone seeking or promoting an internship. So one of the things that's unique to Indiana Internet, and that I want to spend a lot of time on um, today is talking about the Earn Indiana program. So Earn Indiana, um, we facilitate the program. It's managed by the Indiana Commission for Higher Education. But what it does, it provides um, up to 50% reimbursement to Indiana employers who offer high quality internships to low income Hoosier students. It's kind of a win-win for both because, you know, yes, the employer is getting that reimbursement for that student, but they're also, you know, the, the diversity among students who qualify for the EARN program, it's a very diverse group. So it's a way to kind of, you know, help facilitate and, and improve diversity within your company. And for students, you know, it gives them an experience to the high quality um, paid internship experience when most of these students wouldn't be able to take on an internship unless it's a paid um, opportunity. And the EARN program does help um, enhance student employer matching through our website and I'll go into um, a little bit more detail. So this is the student criteria. So looking at students, this is how they're determined if they're eligible or not. So to be eligible, they do need to be an Indiana resident. You know, they actually have to be a resident, not just, you know, going to school here, living on campus, but then they go back home to their hometown in, you know, Ohio or something. Um, they can't have a bachelor's degree prior to when they work, but however, an intern can work and qualify for EARN um, the semester immediately following after graduation. So we see that a lot in summer. Students graduate in May. They take an internship in the summer to get more skills. They're still going to be eligible for the EARN program. And then lastly, here's kind of the financial piece. So a student has to be enrolled full-time or part-time at an eligible Indiana College or University and have an expected family contribution from their FAFSA less than or equal to 24,570 or less. So I can tell you when I was in college, I never knew what my expected family contribution was. I probably didn't even know what that meant. Um, so when you're connecting with students, most of them aren't going to know off the top of their head what their expected family contribution is. So we make it super, super, super easy for students to see if they qualify. All they need to do, log into Indiana Internet, make an account. Um, there is an application for students. It pops up. It's the very first thing they see when they log in. It's very easy to fill out first name, last name, last four digits of their social and their birth date and they find out immediately whether or not they qualify for the program. 
So, you know, as you're connecting with students, you can always take that time to confirm eligibility. Students who are already on the website and have confirmed that eligibility are going to have that little green urn logo that you see in the bottom next to their name. So you can kind of get that feel as to which students qualify and which do not. So another thing that's exciting about EARN is that we are expanding it to high school students. It was approved by the General Assembly in 2019. The first eligible class for high school is the graduating class of 2023, so this year's freshmen. However, it hasn't quite rolled out to high school students just yet. I'm not quite sure when it will, um, just because high school students, they don't have a FAFSA. They haven't filled one out yet, so they can't really determine that economic uh, piece yet. So, you know, I'm leaving it up to the Commission for Higher Education to figure it out. It's kind of in their hands, um, but we do kind of have to rebuild the system, so to speak, to get those students approved. Um, so we're looking, I know they're looking at potentially, you know, for your reduced lunch status as a potential income qualifier. Um, but again, that's something to look forward to in the future of having earn available to high school students. It hasn't happened yet, but I'm excited when it will happen in the future. So here's the internship criteria, and I'll actually send a flyer to Roxy to include to all of you with this criteria listed. But internships do have to be paid. They have to be at least the federal minimum wage. Um, has to be at least eight weeks, but no more than one year. So you, so this was kind of a, a piece to a sustainability rule that they put in. Um, you can have an intern and you can receive reimbursement for that same intern for no more than a year. You can keep that intern on longer than a year, you just can't receive reimbursement past that year mark. And it's just to make sure more interns can participate in the program, more funding is available for employers. Um, 12 to 20 hours per week is during the school year, 12 to 40 hours per week during the summer. Um, the work that the intern does cannot be political in nature or you know, religious in nature, sectarian in nature. Um, the work that the intern does has to be less than 25% administrative in nature. We want to make sure that they're doing, you know, actually really good work to, you know, bolster their skills. And it can't, the internship can't already be designated as federal work study because you would be double dipping into funds. Um, one last thing to make you aware of uh, another sustainability piece that the commission put in is that um, companies cannot receive more than a total of $30,000 in reimbursement per state fiscal year, which runs from July to June. That $30,000 cap, um, it's hard to reach. I typically only see you know, really large companies who employ a ton of interns or companies who pay their interns a very high wage reach that cap. Um, again, it's a sustainability measure to make sure that student that you know more employers can participate and one employer isn't gobbling up all of the funds so again i'll send this criteria to all of you but i do want to pause for a second and see if anyone has any questions about um, either student criteria or internship criteria for earn and also internships that are earn eligible have that little green logo next to their name as well All right, I'll keep going and but leave time for people if they're typing something into the chat. So how do you get involved with the EARN Indiana program? I'll also send to Roxy a step-by-step -step guide um, that'll walk you through the steps of, you know, making an account on Indiana internet, posting an internship, applying to EARN, filling it, all of that good stuff. So you don't have to worry about remembering all of this today. Um, but like I mentioned, students and employers have to go through Indiana Internet to participate in the program. Earn eligible students and positions have this little logo next to their name. You can actually search for students who quali qualify for EARN using our advanced internship search. And employers do claim reimbursement directly through the state. So you post an internship through us during the posting process. It asks if you want to use EARN, yes or no. You fill out an application for EARN, you know, including your um, federal employer identification number, um, 
you know, how many hours per week they're working, the hourly wage, all of that good stuff. Um, you fill your internship and then you actually would go through um, the state's website and put their hours that they work and get a check um, direct deposited to you directly from the state. So, you know, luckily I don't have to deal with the money side of those things. I'm just here to help with the internship side. Another thing I do like to remind employers is that when you post your internship on our website, we do screen every internship. So if there is something that, you know, it, it may not be a high quality program or it could be something that would disqualify you for the EARN program, we can decline that internship, provide some feedback, you can go edit it. Um, and then, you know, once we do approve your internship, your EARN application is sent to the Commission for Higher Education to review and approve. Um, they get kind of ultimate say so as to whether or not you qualify. Again, it takes about five business days for them. Usually it's a lot quicker, but I do like to, to say give them time if, if they're busy. Um, but if they do have any issues with your internship, they also provide feedback as well. So it's not kind of like an end all be all. Um, you can go back, you can modify your description, strengthen it, add any information as needed. So another thing that I do like to tell employers is that Indiana Internet is not the only resource that you have to use to utilize, to find interns and utilize the EARN Indiana program. We know that you may have connections with local colleges, universities. We know that you may have personal connections, going to career fairs. You know, don't stop doing that, um, but you can still use EARN. So here's kind of how to if you find a student who may not be on Indiana Internet, here's how you can plug them in and you know utilize that fund, the funding that's available to you. So, you know, step one is you really, you know, I always tell employers when you're starting recruitment, get your internship posted to Indiana Internet, submit it to earn. So that way you don't have to worry about that process. But let's say you connect with a student from a career fair. Have that student make an Indiana Internet account and apply to EARN to verify their eligibility. We have some employers, if that funding is you know, super important to you, we have some employers make that part of the interview process. If the funding isn't important to you, um, we have employers make the, the verifying of the EARN process be a part of onboarding with their interns. So it's kind of you know, whatever your priorities are. If the student is eligible for EARN, that's awesome. So, you know, you want to double check that your internship is posted and you want to double check that your internship has that little EARN logo next to the name. Um, but then if that intern is eligible, you just fill the internship with that student. It's that easy. They don't have to apply to your internship on Indiana Internet. You can just search for their name. It'll be in the instructions. You'll see how to do it but it's super, super easy. And that way you can keep those connections that you've already built and still use that funding that is available to you. And I'm just gonna pause before um, I talk a little bit more about some of the other work that we do. I see a chat here, question. So um, outside of the EARN Indiana program, do you have any tips for employers on how to offer paid internship positions? I'm often asked to promote, and this is from Christy, I'm often asked to promote unpaid internships to my students. Most of my students are working and to take an unpaid internship also involves a loss of income. Although the experience of an unpaid internship is certain, certainly valuable, many students won't consider them. Yeah, Christy, that, that is such a good point. Um, the two internships I had in college were unpaid. They were very, very valuable. They helped to get me where I am today. But I, I do understand that some students can't do it. As for um, other programs, you know, off the top of my head, I don't know any programs, you know, to, to send you to, but I do know that some schools, and it, it all depends on schools, every school is different. Some schools may have funding available to help fund your intern. Um, you can always connect with those schools, see if there are options available. Um, I know some programs are, you might be able to, to pay for half or have grants and things like that available. So it doesn't hurt to ask. Another thing that you can do is, you know, to offer some, some perks and things to students. If you can't necessarily pay an hourly wage, you know, maybe you could pay 
for their parking if parking isn't free working in downtown indy oh my gosh parking is such a perk to get free parking or you know provide them with lunch that's available at your office or you know maybe even a stipend so i know some nonprofit organizations kind of go the stipend route if you work out the hour hourly wage stipends they're not eligible for earn um, because when you kind of divide what stipend they receive versus the hours that they work. It is below the federal minimum wage, but it is still some funding to pay an intern. So that's another kind of route that I've seen some, some nonprofits go. Is that some other questions? Oh, awesome. Good. And another thing too is to really make sure, I, I know a lot of unpaid internships that we see on Indiana internet, um, they require that the student is receiving college credit for that internship. So that is something too that you can provide as well for that student. Not all internships on our site have to be for college credit too. I do just wanna clarify. So our website, or our organization is much more than our website. So one of the things that we offer is the free employer's guide to internships. Um, a few slides back, we had a little picture of it in the corner, um, but I'll send a link to Roxy to send out to you all. Um, it is a basically a guidebook that will walk you through making an internship program, making sure that it's very high quality. In the back, in the appendix, there are um, printable pages like an internship agreement, um, a work plan, yeah, internship evaluation, intern evaluation that you can kind of print and make your own. Um, we have it on our website at the bottom that it's always available for free, always available for you to download. Um, but I'll make sure to get that into your hands. And then we also offer concierge recruitment. So that is for a fee, um, but we do see employers who may not have time or they may be a one person HR company. Um, so what we can offer is um, you provide us with the internship, what type of students you're looking for, the skills and qualities that you're looking for in the intern. And we can search our website for students meeting those, those needs, reach out to them, explain the internship position that you're offering, um, find out if they're interested, and then if they are, connect you with those students. So, you know, you're getting a student who is interested in your program sent to you directly. And then lastly, this is actually coming up next week. I'll make sure Roxy has a link for that, but it is a free virtual employer and educator meetup. So we've been offering these multiple times throughout this pandemic, but it is, um, it's through Zoom and it's a way to connect with other Hoosier employers and also educators around the state. Um, this particular meetup, we're going to be talking, we surveyed um, students and we surveyed employers asking them you know what their thoughts are about hosting fall internships this year and we also are kind of getting their feel on doing a micro internship during winter break so a lot of schools are moving to not having fall break or spring break but having a longer winter break and we see that as a really good opportunity for you know students to have an internship that's not going to be as long as a traditional internship but it is still a good time for them to, to get those skills that they need. So that's gonna be a big, um, a big topic for that program. But again, it's completely free. Um, you do have to register, but it will be through Zoom. And it's, it's um, such a great way to share ideas, get feedback and connect with um, different people in different industries. So this is some of the work. I just wanted to show the magnitude of work that we've done. Um, a couple things that I'm really, really proud of. Um, we have had over 10,600 filled internships that we've recorded. It's been huge. Um, when we made that milestone, it was one of the, the greatest accomplishments. Um, and 2019 was actually our most successful year in program history. We had over 15,000 students access our website. Um, we had 1,100 employers and organizations, 4,100 positions, and over 1,200 filled internship positions. It was huge. And I think, you know, our second most successful year in history was like 700 to 800 filled internships. So to be able to blow that out of the water, it was, it was great. 
2020 is a little rough, but I think we can all just put that as an asterisk in, I think, everyone's, everyone's uh, kind of notebook or record keeping. It's just a weird year. So then I wanted to look at Wayne County, you know, what, what's going on there? Um, and there's so much opportunity. So in Wayne County, 123 students um, accessed Indiana internet in 2019. So these are students who listed Wayne County as their county of permanent residence. When students register, they can, they can pick, they can list two counties. So they can list the county that they primarily live in and it's optional, but they can also list the county that they temporary, temporarily live in. So for example, if they're you know, living on campus within the county, they can select that, but they may live you know, elsewhere as their hometown. But you know, we only had three total active employers and six post games. So those 123 students who are looking for probably you know, local opportunities, they probably aren't finding it. Um, zero field internships were recorded in 2019, but there's a huge opportunity. So this number is from 2019. I haven't got updated 2020 numbers just yet because um, the commission is still working on handing out awards to students. So looking at seeing, you know, which students qualify for the EARN program. But the commission is able to see based on students FAFSAs, you know, how many students are eligible. So over 1500 earn Indiana eligible students live in Wayne County. So if you're connecting with local students to fill your internship roles or local, you know, people who live locally, there's probably a good chance that they're eligible for the program. It's just making them aware, having them take the steps to verify their eligibility and um, you know, getting, getting your internships onto our website. So, so much opportunity. We can really change these numbers in 2020, 2021, um, but I did just wanna make you aware. So that's it for my presentation. Um, does anyone have any questions? And not just questions for me, but if you have questions for Emily as well, I did prep her to let her know. So if you wanna know, you know, what an entrance experience was like, as a virtual intern, please feel free to ask. Um, you can unmute yourself and ask or type it into the chat. And I did just wanna say, you know, after this, we'll, we'll provide the chat, the chat transcript, the PowerPoint, um, the recording of the video and um, you know, any, any other flyers that I mentioned. Emily, you have a question. Um, so Emily, this is from Roxy. Do you feel like you missed important information being virtual during your internship? That's a good question. Um, I wouldn't say I feel like I missed important information. I think what I really needed to have, I got through Zoom meetings, email a lot, and Microsoft Teams and all of that. Um, I think the less important information, just like the subtle what's going on in the organization and the company, I think I missed out on that a little bit because, you know, I wasn't overhearing conversations about mm -hmm. things I wasn't involved in and things like that. Um, but I definitely felt well equipped with the information I needed. Awesome. And I think to, to add to Emily, um, some of the things that we did, so with the survey results that we got back from students. Students who were primarily virtual or hybrid interns during the summer, they expressed the biggest thing that was the biggest issue with those experiences is that they felt disconnected from the company's culture because, you know, they're, they're not there in the company, they're not working. So some of the things we did to, I hope, remedy this with Emily is that we, we had, um, you know, team lunches. Yesterday, we had a, a team lunch where we all um, ate together. Our executive director sent us Grubhub gift cards, so we got you know lunch lunch on the team, and we just talked and hung out. And and for us, I don't know about your company, but food is always a really big thing for us to bond over and connect. So we did a virtual welcome lunch. We did a virtual goodbye lunch. Another thing I did with Emily is just ask. You know, we have so many different people working at the chamber in different departments. So I asked, you know, who do you want to meet? Who do you want to connect with? And I set up one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings with people from different departments. 
for her to learn about what they do and the work that they provide. And that I felt like it, it I hope, is a way to kind of ingrain interns a little bit more into the company than just keeping them you know, within the team or within your department. Any other questions for myself or Emily? Well, I'm going to wrap things up. Thank you all so much for being here. If you do have any questions, you know, feel free to, to send them to, to Roxy. She can connect you with me. My contact information is here if you want to reach out directly. Um, like I said, this year is such a weird year. It's, it's so, it's been said so many times, but it's so unprecedented. And so I'm here to help you more than happy to help you along the way with any internship questions. I hope to see your company on our website. I hope to see your internships posted and um, I hope to, to stay in touch. So have a great day. Thanks so much for, for coming. Thank you.